first step in assembling the probe is to carefully examine the printed circuit board. What we're looking for is any little slivers of copper that might short across these four grooves, any significant burring around the six holes that are in the printed circuit board. Be very cautious if you do have to do any deburring that you do not enlarge the hole, deform the hole, or change its proportion and dimensions in any way. This would cause the balls that will be later soldered to the board to be out of relationship one to another and cause inaccuracies in the probe. Occasionally, you will get a printed circuit board that will have a nib left on it. This one is exaggerated for purposes of this video. And this is where the file comes in handy. If this nib is large enough that it might come in contact with the inner wall of the cylinder or of the probe body when it is assembled you want to remove it and the file is the easiest way to do that. This one as I said is exaggerated very seldom will you see anything anything close to that. The first thing that you want to do is to be sure that the surface of the printed circuit board is clean. I just use a Kleenex and a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And just Gently clean off any excess finger oil, oil from your hands that might be on the contact or the printed circuit board. We'll then open the container of flux. And what we want to do is apply flux on the printed circuit board just to this side of each hole. We would prefer that the flux not be applied between the hole and the groove. This reduces the chances of creating a solder bridge across the groove but just flux around about half of the hole on the side away from the groove. Take your brush and get a small amount of flux on the brush and just smear it around the side of the hole. It really doesn't matter if you leave little mountains of flux, so to speak. The important thing is that you do have a little bit of flux around about one half of the holes. Open the package of balls, and here's where I use the jeweler's fingers. I pick up a ball, and 
I just drop it in a hole. I then use the brush and flux again. And here's where the corn dog stick comes in handy. Just apply a little bit of flux to the bottom half of the ball on this side of the ball only. Avoid applying flux above the bottom half of the bowl and also avoid applying flux on this side. Okay, we're ready to solder now. Ten your soldering iron. Depending upon the size of your soldering iron, it may take a while to heat up the ball. Once it's heated up, if you want, it generally will just roll back into shape. But if you want to reflow the solder while holding down the ball, that's okay. As you can see, we have soldered only about half of the ball. There's no need to solder all the way around the ball. This gives us a strong enough mechanical joint and of course a strong enough electrical joint. We now have completed the soldering of the balls to the con to the printed circuit board. At this point in time, you want to examine the balls. Be sure that the solder has wicked up the side of the balls, which would indicate that the balls have been raised to a high enough temperature to bond to the solder. The other thing you want to check for is that there is no solder on this portion of the ball here. Anywhere above the bottom half of the ball, this being the bottom half, the side that's soldered to the board, no solder above, no solder on this side of the ball, and no solder on the inside of the balls, especially above the, the halfway point of the balls, no solder in this area here. This is where the contact, the contactor probe, contact, contactor makes contact with the ball printed circuit board. So you can see that if there was any solder, I'm not doing this very well. If there was any solder in this area, it would cause problems with the contactor later on. At this point, we're going to pause. I'm going to take this and wash the printed circuit board with common dishwashing soap, di liquid dial, hand soap, whatever you wish to use. Also, wash any of your tools that it may have come in contact with the flux. The solder flux is highly corrosive, and if you do not wash your tools, you will end up with corrosion on your tools. 